Hi guys and welcome back to Studio One with me Gregor. So today we want to take a look at pattern mode, which is an alternative mode to the classic instrument parts in Studio One. And it's especially great for very complex rhythms that you want to build in just a couple of seconds and perfect for drums in particular. Let's take a look. So most of you know that if you double click on an instrument part in Studio One, you're going to create an event part for it. An event part is just a classic MIDI editor where we have either a drum mode or a piano roll melodic mode in Studio One and you can just draw in your MIDI notes. And this is a linear event, which means this timeline that you see here is always identical with the one at the top. Now, if you hold Option on a Mac or Alt on a Windows PC and double click, you're creating a pattern part instead. Now the difference between pattern parts and classic instrument parts is that pattern have a loop range within themselves. What do I mean by that? Well, you can see that as soon as you open up the pattern, you have a 16 steps global range and you can up that to 32 or even 64. This determines the loop range of your pattern before it starts over again. So if it's set to, let's say, 16 steps, for instance, and I have a kick drum on every fourth step. Let me just use the little preset button here. As soon as it reaches this point, if I allow the pattern to play longer, it's going to repeat itself, right? So let me just increase this to say 32 so you can see it a bit more clearly. Now it's gonna repeat itself after two bars because 32 16th notes is two bars, okay? Once I set in another step here, you can see that it's been added here and here. So that's what I meant when I said that pattern parts have their own loop range. I hope this is not too confusing for you right now. If it is, then please hang in there because we're actually gonna build a pattern from scratch together now. I'm sure it will become more obvious as we go along. Now the best thing to do is to get an atom when you work with pattern mode. Of course it also works without the atom, but it's just so much more fun to have a controller that's really made to measure for this way of working. So first of all, I can use it to tap tempo. And um, I'm gonna do this right now. Just go on a setup page and it's pad 14 for tempo. And I'm thinking like, so that's 100 BPM, maybe a little bit faster. 111, that's perfect for me. And uh, I'm also gonna put on the metronome. So that was already on, perfect. And one more thing I wanna do is enable step record. So if I go on the setup page of the Atom, the lower eight buttons are customizable and that's possible right here. I'm just gonna show you really quickly. And um, I map this one to step record enable which is really, really cool because it allows me to um, activate the recording mode that's dedicated to the pattern editor and just record also in real time a couple of things, which is often more interesting than using these presets or doing so with the mouse. One, two, three, Okay, that's already a cool little pattern. All right, that's already nice groove here. And I'm gonna show you a couple of the workflows of the pattern editor now that you don't have with the classic music editor. So let's take Maybe this sound, for instance, because you can hear it very clearly. And set it to a step length of 5. Like I said, this is going to override the global step length of 32, but only for this pad. So hopefully you can see it that all of these run 32 steps and this one only runs 5 and starts over again. So it always plays at a different time than all the other stuff. And it takes forever until they play the same thing again, which makes for kind of unpredictable variation, but still not totally random. So now I can just 
go to my editor here on the Atom, see how the light is running on the five pads here. I hope you can see it as well. Just gonna set one step on the third and see how much complexity this adds to the rhythm. Incredible, huh? It's just one note and so much complexity being added, especially if I now go to the probability tab here and I decrease the probability of this particular note to 50%. Incredible. Let's go to a hi-hat and set this to a step length of two. So now we can have like a 16th hi-hat. or an 8th hi-hat. We can also set a couple more steps to have like a little ramp, like so. And we can have a couple repeats. Now the repeats are basically multiplications and re-triggers. So on this 16th note, when the re-trigger is set to 1, this means that in the time frame of one 16th note, there's gonna be one re-trigger. So effectively you're getting two 30 second notes. One step higher you would get four 64th notes, the next one would be eight 128th notes and so forth. And really create some glitching effects with that. Especially interesting once again if we work with probability. So one thing we could do is open up the pattern inspector now and duplicate this pattern and yep, you're seeing correctly, we can have multiple variations within the same pattern and we also can set individual solo and mute states which makes this so much fun. So let me just call this one intro, call the next one pattern A and the next one is like pattern B full. And the intro, maybe just the kick and the clap. Now these solo states, as I've said, are um, only saved for this particular variation. So if I go to the next one, I can say, okay, I want these two plus the rim shot that I've added. And the next one is the full on. So let's just go ahead and duplicate this pattern two times and say intro for this one, pattern A for this one, pattern B for, for that one. And let's just play them all right after each other and also watch in the pattern editor as they shift around. Yeah, and of course I could also drag this on and uh, it would loop indefinitely. And yeah, there's so much more to it. You can also set a global swing that's actually only uh, shifting the offbeats and the beats in between. So as you can see, the notes here at the beat beginnings are not shifted, which gives you this nice tightness, but still that bit of human feel. You can also work with accents by holding command on a Mac or control on a Windows PC, which gives you like a 30% increased velocity. You can also go into impact and um, start automating any parameter that you want. So for example, the, um, the hi-hats here, we can do a pitch automation, just right click it and go edit pattern automation. And now you can just draw in whatever you like. And you're gonna see it shift immediately here on the Impact XT. As you can see, lots of possibilities here. And the most amazing part for me is that if I decide, huh, I really like this idea, but I don't know if I can build a song from it yet, or maybe I have another song where this would be really cool, it's just not this one, I can just open up the browser and drag one of these pattern variations onto my folder. Once I've done so, not only have I rendered a preview file of this pattern, but I can also go to a completely new project, like so. Drag in this pattern. And not only do I get the pattern recalled with all of the variations inside, but I also get my entire impact 
XT, preset recalled with all of the output routings, all of the insert effects, and all of the pads as well. Absolutely incredible way of working, especially because you can combine these pattern parts with traditional instrument parts on the same track. So you can use pattern to just have some fills going on. You can use it for some highly complex percussion. And of course, you can convert the pattern into a traditional part at any point. If you don't want that randomness anymore, it's as easy as hitting the G key. So I hope you find this inspiring and I'll see you next time. Thank you.